Good afternoon and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Mwaka. Here are some of the highlights. 104 Unity Colleges open their gates to exit classes today as Education Commissioners report varying degrees of reopening between the 4th and 10th of August. Ministry of Education to monitor compliance. Commercial flights resume at the Yakubu Gowan Airport Joss after four months of inactivity as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. And India reports 803 deaths and more than 50,000 new cases, the highest total in a single day. The Nigeria Centre for Disease Control and CDC has confirmed 288 new infections last night, a record low compared to the previous daily cases in the last four days. According to the centre, the new cases were confirmed in 14 states and the Federal Capital Territory with Lagos recording 88, Kwara 33, Oshun 27, the FCT 25, Enugu 25 as well, Abia 20, 17 in Kaduna, Plateau 13, Rivers as well, 13, 10 in Delta, 8 in Gombe states, 4 in Ugun, 3 in Oyo, 1 each in Katsina and Bochi states. A total of 355 people were discharged yesterday, putting the total recoveries to 20,663 people confirmed negative for the virus by the NCDC. The death toll stands at 896, with eight new deaths confirmed in the last 24 hours. All the states and the Federal Capital Territory have recorded deaths due to the uh, coronavirus complications, except Taraba State, which has 54 confirmed cases, 11 discharged, and 43 cases still on admission. Till date, 44,129 cases have been confirmed, recorded in the 36 states and the FCT with Lagos still having the highest number of infection at 13,003 cases, uh, followed by the FCT, 2,767 active cases, and or your state is the third highest. It has 1,347 COVID-19 patients on treatment. These are the top three states with over 1,000 cases on admission in Nigeria. Now, the Minister of State for Education, Mr. Chukwemi Kangwa says all Unity Colleges in the 36 states of the Federation are ready for students in exit classes. He made the announcement during a Zoom meeting with the State Commissioners of Education and praised the principles of the Unity Colleges for the comprehensive preparations put in place for resumption. In a statement released on Twitter after the meeting, the Minister uh, permanent secretaries and directors will embark on an assessment tour of all the colleges to confirm reports received from the principals. Also expected to monitor compliance of resumption of all the 104 colleges are the Federal Education Quality Assurance Directors that have been deployed to the various states of the Federation. While most schools resume today, others will continue to fine-tune their preparations and communicate specific dates for reopening to parents and students for smooth return. Now, schools in Ogun State have finally reopened to SS3 uh, final year students after four months of non-academic activity occasioned by the closure of schools due to the spread of COVID-19. As monitored in Abeokuta, the state capital, some schools visited complied strictly to all safety protocols stipulated by authorities, and some of the students also expressed their delight to be back in school. Uh, inform them about the issue of COVID-19, the COVID-19 protocols to be observed. Then you see them coming in with the face mask. And this face mask was given to every student throughout the whole state. So they put on their face mask. We also have social distancing. The sanitization is there. The foyer thermometer is there to take their temperature as they come in and the hand washing materials are there. And they, are, they have also been, been uh, they, are, they, they have also been educated about how to comply with the COVID-19 protocols. We are expected to observe social distancing rules. We must always wear our, fa our face masks every time and we should avoid unnecessary 
closeness with others and we should try as much as possible to wash our hands regularly, most preferably every 45 minutes or whenever we sweep the class, whenever we dust our chairs. Did I actually give up? Give up like, ah, like I was so stressed because, because I couldn't even, even imagine. That was when we were, we were asked to resume. That was uh, July 13. And we couldn't be able to resume. I couldn't give up. I actually give up to the extent that's on topic, I just have to go back over it. But now I'm really happy for, for coming back to school and also to gain more knowledge. We have more of that update from Uyo, um, but now let's take you to River State, where the governor has been speaking on the strategy to enforce compliance of the coronavirus safety protocols. According to Governor Yesun Wike, majority of the people are following the guidelines. However, the COVID-19 task force in the state will not hesitate to prosecute anyone found flouting the COVID-19 guidelines. The governor was speaking at the state capital, Portaco, today. What we're trying to do was set up a task force to implement the compulsory wearing of the face uh, marks. And we told all the, all the major shops that, look, if we come, across, we've come around and uh, you're dealing with people who are not wearing their masks, we shut down the, the, the malls or the shops, as the case may, may be. Why I have not been able to open the markets is just how do I, how do I handle the issue of the markets? Because, of course, you know, people, the, the kind of crowd and the rest of it. Uh, well, the various unions are coming, we have a meeting that look, they will comply. Mm. So, and well, so they have said they will comply, and likely will open up all the the, uh, the market, but what's important that I look to wear your face uh, uh, mask. Oh. So we think that it, is, it will not be an easy thing for you to say, oh, you took a decision, everybody will comply at the same, mm -hmm. at the same time, no. But when you begin to apply sanctions, then you they will see that our oh, government is very serious and some people will be prosecuted. Well, let's talk some more about the guidelines for school reopening. Joining us from Abuja studio is Dr. Safia Ojo. She's a public health physician, also a family physician. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program, doctor. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, are you confident in the capacity of um, the school's learning facilities nationwide? And this is to safely reopen for exiting students this period. Okay, thank you very much for the question. I think uh, to the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic we know has been for a long time, some months now, and students have been at home as a result of this pandemic. But I think a lot of efforts have been put by the government to ensure safe reopening of uh, uh, schools, like ensuring the provision of, ensuring that there are provision of face masks, or, uh, hand sanitizers, or good portable water and soap for washing so that they pay, it will reduce the uh, uh, incidence of infections in these students. And I think the students who need to, the pupil students need to be well informed about COVID-19. We shouldn't assume that they know much about it. They need to be taught maybe a brief uh, lecture on COVID-19 on resumption of school. And uh, they should ensure all temperature checks are being, by health personnel, temperature checks are being carried out to know who has a high temperature, who needs to be, and maybe create an isolation room for tempera, for temporarily for those with high temperature or those students with a upper respiratory tract infection. Uh, but I know, I believe some states have put up a lot of measures to ensure that uh, there is safe reopening, trying to ensure even some states in this country has made sure that they, there is provision of trucks to get water into the schools, in those schools that they don't have adequate water, and to also ensure that there is use of the face masks are made available for all students. I think to a large extent, a lot has been put up by the government to ensure safe reopening of schools. Do you think that the guideline differs, mm -hmm. and this is mm -hmm. when you talk about uh, students who are boarding, who are boarders, and, and those who are day students? Yes, talking about the guidelines now, those ones that are uh, day students, uh, it's easier to handle them compared to boarding, those that are boarders. Because those that are boarders, they may need to, they, when they get to the hostel, trying to uh, maintain social distancing and all that may not be easy for them. But those in the day school, it's easier to like uh, adequate monitoring by teachers to ensure uh, the, the, the right things are being done, the protocols are being followed and to, to, so as to prevent transmission 
of the, the COVID-19 virus. So I think it's easier to handle those in the, in the days compared to uh, uh, boarding student, uh, students. So it, the best thing is to ensure that we, we try to look for a, a more uh, better way of ensuring those in the boarding students will be well handled to prevent uh, spread of infection of COVID-19. So I think that's what we should do and we should ensure adequate education of these students to, to, to is uh, made possible in schools so that they can know much about the virus, they can know the methods of prevention and how, and how to handle. In fact, they, they, should be, uh, they, should be, they should discipline themselves to ensure that they don't uh, just behave anyhow or come in contact with a virus, the virus. So I think that will go a long way. Adequate information in the uh, part of the student will be very, very important. But for uh, boarding schools, well, we know that it's safe... Okay, Dr. Hello. Joe, I was so actually I think going to say what that we should that, do is... Yes, I was going to actually say that there's also a lot of risk, especially for the day students who will be travelling on a daily basis, depending on where their school is. Um, there seems to be a lot of responsibility on the part of the parents and the guardian in that regard, doesn't there? Yes, for those travelling from one point to the other, like entering on public transport, if you look at the transport, uh, whatever, up till now, they don't even use face masks in some of the cars. So it's a lot of, it's a problem. I don't know, we need to ensure that people follow these protocols and ensure that there is a re reduction in the incidence of this virus. Make sure when you're entering car, those traveling from one point to the other to go to the school, they should ensure they use their face masks, the use of hand sanitizers to reduce risks of transmission of COVID-19. So I, I think a lot because I, I've noticed a lot of people, persons now don't really use the face masks again. They don't even bother much about uh, precautionary measures taking against the, the COVID-19 virus. So a lot has to be done. Maybe adequate education, we, keep, we need to keep informing people about the best ways to, 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 to keep ourselves safe from this virus. But nevertheless, we know life has to continue, even in the midface of COVID-19. Students have stayed uh, home for months as a result of the virus. The main thing is to ensure we, we follow the rules and regulations. So it will help to uh, reduce risks of contracting this uh, uh, COVID-19 virus. Well, Aisha, thank you Which so I much, think, Dr. Uh, Safia uh, The government um, is... Okay. Thank you, a public health physician, family physician. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Now, commercial flights have resumed at the Akubagawan Airport, just the north-central uh, part of Nigeria, after four months of inactivity as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Over 100 passengers were on board for the inbound flight from Lagos to Jos after the Federal Airport Authority uh, put in place necessary materials in compliance with the directive and guidelines for the resumption of activities. Take a look. The flight is resuming in Jaws Airport. Uh, we have almost about uh, four or five uh, months back that the flight has been, uh, been uh, cancelled because of this uh, coronavirus thing. And before we actually start, we have put many things in place for the safety of the passengers. You can see we have a uh, ocean basin there. We have, uh, on the inside, we have taps. We don't need soap all over. And all those things we have mentioned now, and we we'll find out that uh, it is there. So we, we will actually plead with the, the passenger to please use all these things. If they don't want to wash their hand, maybe they are so in a hurry to wash their hand, there are sanitizer dispensers all over at the different, different spots. We have about 10 or 15,000 tether defenders in the terminal building. Please, we are, we are obliged, I mean, we please them to please use the sanitizers. We have more on the COVID-19 updates when we return. Please stay with us. And secondary schools in Kwaibom State are resuming today for students in exit classes. A survey of secondary schools in the state capital reveals that while some private schools in the capital city are ready for resumption, the same cannot be said about the public secondary schools. Most private secondary schools have made concrete efforts to comply with the NCDC protocols. Now, Channel's television witnessed an orientation for students and teachers at the Nigerian Christian Institute, a private school in the capital city, where the management and students said everything has been put in place for safe resumption and subsequent examinations. We have enough space that we are able to provide the social distancing both in the dormitories and in the classes, we have enough classroom space. 
And we don't just have a sick bay, we have a full-fledged hospital, the resident doctor, to ensure that even though we're praying that nothing happens, but should something come up, we can handle it. So we're happy that we're able to start so our children will get ready for the exams. Well, let's go over to uh, our guest who's joined us via Skype, Dr. Adam Mohammed, uh, former Executive Director, National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much and good afternoon, Nigerians. All right. It's been a while we spoke uh, on the COVID-19 update program, but I'd like to get your thoughts as to what you've noticed with regards to the daily cases in the coronavirus in Nigeria. Yes, I think uh, for, for now, um, I've been speaking with a number of uh, colleagues, and um, some of our colleagues are beginning to think that uh, we are beginning to see uh, the flattening of the curve, particularly that uh, we've seen a number of cases, daily cases, uh, far from over 500, now down to uh, uh, 400, and then now about 288 or thereabouts uh, as of uh, yesterday. Um, I want to um, you know, sound a, cautious, a, a, a word of caution. Uh, for me, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I'm saying that uh, for two reasons. It's, uh, it's possible that uh, what we're seeing is real, and it's also possible that it's a misnomer. Uh, if it's real, um, we need to learn from other countries um, that have contained and controlled the transmission of the virus, and then I begin to say second wave. So we shouldn't uh, take any chance. You know, we should not know, uh, you know, we just have to be very careful. Secondly, if it's a misnomer, it's possible it's a misnomer. A uh, misnomer in the sense that, uh, could it be that uh, uh, the processing time for the samples, you know, is, 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 is causing this uh, drop in number of cases? Could it also be that uh, there's under reporting? Could it also be possible that uh, we're really not getting feedback uh, from uh, the state and front line? You know, so uh, these are two possibilities, you know, uh, but... Um, uh, for me, I would prefer a situation that uh, is real, uh, you know, that uh, we are beginning to get an entry point into the flattening of the curve. You know, but even with that, one also has to be very careful, um, yes, optimistic, but cautiously, uh, because uh, what is happening in Europe and uh, what is also happening in America uh, is a pointer uh, to the fact that uh, this is a virus that uh, um, even if you are containing, if you are taking control, that uh, it could strike, you know, uh, a return. Uh, through a second wave. You know. So uh, for me, that is what I have to say on that. But by and large, yes, the government of Nigeria is doing its best. The federal government is doing uh, its best in terms of the overall coordination. Um, what we expect is, uh, and what I want to see, um, is that the effort of federal government should be consolidated by the front line uh, in terms of the states uh, containing uh, the transmission uh, do, uh, you know, uh, community transmission now, you know, because uh, the challenge now is the community transmission. We need to nip it in the board, uh, you know, for us to be able to contain the virus. Dr. Mohammed, the same caution has been re-echoed um, by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. And we know now that um, the exiting students are coming back uh, this week uh, to write their exams. Do you think that... Um, you know, they're, they're all prepared looking at the community-related risk factors to reopening schools, and this is for both the teachers and the students. Yes, sir. Uh, if, you, if you look at it, uh, we, 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 it just have to be a trade-off. We just have to have a trade-off. Um, the trade-off is, do we keep our children at home? And that will affect their progression in terms of, you know, uh, academic pursuits. Or do we just, you know, um, allow them to go back to school? Now, if we allow them to go back to school to, um, uh, uh, to participate in their exams, you know, um, to attend their exams and then sit for their exams, you know, then we have to put the appropriate uh, mechanism and protocol in place. I'm happy that uh, the tax force on uh, COVID-19 have issued uh, to the schools and the Ministry of Education the proper guideline. I've gone through that guideline. That guideline is, 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 is very, um, uh, content-wise, is, is very okay, and um, that will address quite a lot of issues. But the question is that uh, do public institutions and private institutions uh, have the capacity to really abide by those uh, guidelines? I think what we need to do is just to ensure that, yes, as our children go back to school, uh, we have to make sure that 
they are protected. We also have to make sure that the teachers are also uh, protected. We do not want a situation that going back to school will suddenly increase the number of cases. You know? So what we need to do is we need to ensure that public health measures are put in place. First, um, the temperature screening has to be done. Um, masking has to be enforced. Uh, personal hygiene also has to be uh, in place. And then we also have to make sure that the physical uh, distancing is upheld. You know? um, and um, the parent teacher position, uh, because we cannot allow leave everything to government, PTA also has a responsibility. Because PTA uh, parents, uh, they also have to make sure that their wards, you know, the schools in which they are whether private or public, you know, enforce and abide by this guideline that is, you know, uh, set up by the federal government of Nigeria, so that uh, at least we'll be able to protect our children, because these are innocent children. We don't want them to go to school just because they're going for exams, and then they get infected. So we have to properly screen the teachers, uh, screen the uh, um, non-essential workers and essential workers that work in those schools, and to make sure that for each and every person that will have contact with our children, they abide and follow uh, the, uh, the, the guidelines. And I'm sure with that, you know, uh, they, they should be fine. But leaving them at home, I mean, has a lot of other issues because we've, and what, we're, uh, what we've left out over the, in the last few months is that we've not looked at the mental health issues because these are children that have a lot of energy, you know, uh, and uh, if you leave them at home, you have mental health issues in which they may get depressed, you know, uh, anxiety could set in, and then uh, uh, they may challenge their energy in do, doing some other things, antisocial uh, uh, activities, which we would not want. So we need to strike a balance, and I think uh, the, the, the decision by the government of Nigeria to uh, say that they should, those sitting for an exam should go back uh, is, 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 is okay. But uh, right. we need to ensure that uh, yes, they are protected. Thank you so much, Dr. Adam Mohamed, former Executive Director, National and Primary Health Care Development Agency. Thank you for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Thank you. More than 800 people have died of COVID-19 in India on Monday, the highest number of new deaths in the world for that 24-hour period. India has also recorded the highest rate of new infections than any other country. Here's more on our Global Update report. Millions of people in the Philippines are back in lockdown after doctors warned a surge in new coronavirus cases could push the healthcare system to collapse. Stay-at-home orders are now in place in Manila and four surrounding provinces on the island of Luzon for two weeks. The country only just emerged from one of the strictest lockdowns in June. Latin America has reported more than 5 million confirmed COVID-19 cases, with over 2.75 million cases in Brazil alone, the world's second most affected country after the United States. The country on Monday recorded 561 new deaths from COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, bringing the national death toll to 94,665. According to Brazil's health ministry, tests have detected 16,641 new infections, taking the total caseload to over 2.7 million. Australia has closed the national park home to its revered indigenous site of Uluru after some in the community blocked an access route for fear that visitors could carry in coronavirus infections. A few protesters from the Anangu indigenous community stood on the main entrance of the road to the park, down from the previous day's numbers of between 30 and 40 that had turned away tourists before the attraction closed. The country is battling a new wave of the deadly virus with southeastern Victoria state reeling from hundreds of infections, while indigenous Australians are seen at greater risk as they suffer a higher incidence of other health woes. And as Egypt loosens coronavirus restrictions, one restaurant decided to let robot wait the tables in a bid to attract customers who wish to limit human interaction. Adorned with its own name tag, tie and apron, the robot named Mozo, which means waiter in Spanish, is programmed to take orders and deliver meals to the tables. This is all in a bid to curb the spread of the virus. Innovation amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Take a further look at our website, channelcv.com. It has the latest updates on the COVID-19 pandemic. 
at the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Bye for now.